So keep the energy going. Two more before intermission. Please put your hands together. Give a loud, warm welcome to Brandon Spars, everyone. Give it up for Brandon. So I finally landed a job teaching writing at the College of the Marshall Islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This small, quiet fishing town seemed like the perfect place for me to live out my fantasies as a writer in the tropics. All except for one thing. There was this enormous homeless man who was so big, it looked like he was built out of watermelons. His name, Consuma, was misleading because he didn't go shopping. He went chopping. This meant he went into the only grocery store on the island, wielding his only possession, an enormous machete. And when he had taken everything he could carry, he would back out, wielding his machete at anybody who dared challenge him. I remember going around the corner of one of the aisles, coming face to face with him. And he was carrying the biggest goddamn frozen fish I have ever seen in my life. And when he saw me, he shook his machete and he charged. And I sprinted to aisle eight, which is where they kept the diapers. And I cowered there with the other customers while he raged through the store. I started to avoid the downtown area altogether, but... That was when the store owner took action. Now there are no guns allowed in the Marshall Islands, not even for the police. So he hired 12 of the biggest men he could find, issued each of them a baseball bat, and stationed them right in front of the supermarket. It wasn't long thereafter I was teaching an afternoon class on the necessity for solitude in the life of a writer when someone I'd never seen before came to the door of my classroom and announced showdown at the supermarket and all of my students stood up and filed right past me, presumably in the direction of the supermarket. Well, I wasn't going to miss a chance to get in a little writing. So I grabbed my notebook and headed to the nearest palm tree, flipped it open, and began working on my novel, which was about a tortured graduate student working under an overbearing advisor. I tried to tell myself this could be the perfect place. I just needed to shut a few things out. I tried to let the gentle sound of the ocean drown out the roar of the crowd that was beginning in the distance, Consuma's bellowing. Later, I found out, beaten, bruised, and bleeding, Consuma had retreated from the downtown area to the outskirts to nurse his wounds. And then it was rumored he left the island completely. About a week later, I was taking a break from my writing, running some errands at the supermarket and someone new stepped in front of me. Her name was Isha. I remember how she gripped the hem of her purple mumu with both hands. Her wild hair framed this bulging eye that looked just like someone had laid a boiled egg on the dark skin that was her face. I took a hesitant step forward, and that was a mistake. She ripped up her dress and came flying at me. No underwear. The most upsetting thing about this was this hissing sound that was coming from somewhere in her body. I didn't stick around to find out what happened when she reached you. Nobody ever did. There were those that said the hissing was coming from her vagina. Well, it wasn't long thereafter, another afternoon, another man I'd never seen before came to my classroom and announced another showdown at the supermarket, and all of my students stood up, filed right past me, presumably this time, to watch the 12 men with bats descending on Isha. <sighs> I collapsed in my chair. In the distance, I could hear the roar of the crowd beginning. I was just about to grab my notebook and go find a nice palm tree, when I heard something else, bellowing. Why, it sounded like consuma. 
Was he back? Consuma and Isha together. I had to admit I was curious. And when I arrived, yes, there was Isha, fingering the hem of her mumu like a pair of six shooters. And there he was, Consuma, pacing to and fro, brandishing and displaying his machete. And just as he was about to descend on Isha, she ripped up her dress and came flying at him. And yes, the hissing sound was definitely coming from the matted locks of that woman's loins. Why, it was like the hand of the mother goddess herself sprouted from her womb and pop, shot Consuma, rolling back 25, 30 feet through the crushed coral. And so it began. The downtown area became quite lively. And I found the whole thing extraordinarily exciting. It didn't last forever. Outside authorities were brought in. Consuma was placed on a regimen of powerful tranquilizers. And Isha, she was sent away to the quiet tranquility of a hospital on another island. As for me, over the years, as I look back on my time at the Marshall Islands, I never specifically recall any of those times sitting under a tree writing. I remember the times going into the supermarket right past the aisle where the diapers were to the back of the store and selecting the biggest frozen fish I could find, buying it and bringing it out to one of those palm trees and setting it down right next to Consuma, who would be lying there, more often than not, soundly sleeping. Thank you. <laughs>